It's a crazy day. It was a little bit like 9-11. It was a little bit like this election we just had, where you just, things stop working in a way that you're familiar with. So yeah, I was diagnosed in the morning and uh, I had just enough time to go see a particular doctor to begin the process of dealing with this. And I had to be at work at one o'clock, I remember. And we shot a scene, I know exactly what it was. We were sitting at a table, I think it was after we had separated. And he said something, I'm gonna take you for every cent you're worth, or something like that. <clears throat> I couldn't remember my lines, which I never have problems with. Um, you know, it was a real out-of-body experience. It was, I couldn't process the news I had just gotten, and I hadn't really told anyone but the producer of the show, Eileen Landris, who was still a good friend. Um, yeah, it was a crazy day. It was a crazy day, but it sure was easier to get to some of the darker emotions, you know, and Jim even came up to me and said, you know, something's going on. And I said, yes, it is. <laughs> he said, what? And I said, I'll tell you another time. So did you wind up telling them? I did wind up telling him. He thought I was pregnant. I was like, no, 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 that's not it. But I did, I did end up telling him. I didn't tell many people. I told Jim and I told Eileen. I think I may have told David at some point, but it was mostly just so they could schedule around my chemo. I didn't want anyone else to know. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not good at, with a lot of people going, how are you doing? You know, I, 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 I end up responding to that in kind. Like, oh, I don't know, I'm all right. Nobody knew about it, I just went about my day. You know, We were working very long, difficult hours. Everyone was exhausted. So I looked no worse than anybody else on that set. So I, I prefer to keep it that way. So how long were you in treatment and kind of balancing all of this? Oh gosh, um, I feel like the whole thing took a year. I could be wrong. Uh, no, maybe like eight months, something like that. And, uh, you know, they always used my real hair in the show. And then uh, I had to talk to them about making wigs. So I got the wigs made. So the hairdresser, Anthony Viator, knew about it too. Um, they started dressing me and uh, getting me ready in my own little section of the trailers and stuff so I could be in private and stuff. Um, but uh, other than that, things just sort of ch chugged along. And, uh, you know, I dealt with this on my own with my friends and my family, which is what worked for me. It doesn't work for everybody, <clears throat> but that was my, what I did. Do you think your perspective changed at all, having gone through all of that? Um, I'm sure it did. I talked to another person, another cancer survivor, um, who had a far more dramatic experience than I did. And he said, you're, you come out of it and you're like, everything's different. It's almost like when the, the house lands on the witch and everything's in color, you know, but it doesn't last. The next thing you know, you're bitching about the same stuff and you're tired because of this. And, you know, he said, it's amazing how quickly you fall back into, you know. But also, you know, the, 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 the club of women who have survived breast cancer, it's not a little club anymore. We're everywhere. It's a, you know, one in eight of us. And it's, uh, luckily, it's, it's manageable in a way that it, I mean, it usually is manageable in a way that uh, didn't used to be. I was very, very lucky.